This is the third and final video for the cloth covered spring bag. The next step is to cut the levers. But before we do that, I just want to do a little dream sequence to show the final product so that you know what we're trying to make. So I've already shown you one of my prototypes, the green version, and the blue one is going to be the final product from this video. So going back to cutting the lever, so I'm going to put a, a tin in just to protect the text block, and I'm going to use my favourite um, butter knife, which I've sharpened very sharp. I'm going to cut a little strip off at the head and tail of each of the flaps, and this will allow the tabs at the head and tail to go over the turn ends. The next step is to cut the lever that will go into the split boards. Again, this is cut at a very steep angle, so you have to do this in the right direction because those little tabs at the end have to go inside the boards and the lever goes into the split boards. Do the same on the other side of the book. Now remember our spring, it's time to attach it. So we need a piece of book cloth that will wrap around the books. I'm just going to estimate that. I'll make it a bit longer than it needs to be and the height will be a bit less than the height of the lever. This will not be seen so any colour can be used. I just picked a piece of uh, scrap cloth that was a very strong piece of cloth. The cloth will get glued to the inside of the spring, so I'm just going to mark where it will go. And I'll put glue PVA on the cloth and inside the spring. I really want this well attached. I'll spend a bit of time making sure that I've worked out any, any bubbles and made sure this is really well attached. And then I'll leave it overnight to dry. I really don't want to pull this piece of cloth out of the spring when I'm attaching it. The next day I'll put the spring in its final position and once I'm happy with that I'll trim the excess cloth 
so that it's just a bit short of the edge of the lever to continue that uh, idea of feathering it towards the edge. And now I'll use PVA to attach it. I'll leave that for at least a few hours. Overnight's probably even best. The next job is to attach the split boards. We need to cut those to size. So I'll start by truing up the edge that goes to the spine and then do a uh, right angle at one corner. I'll do that for both boards. And then I'll determine the height of the boards. I'll do four millimeter squares, so I'll find the longest dimension of the book and then add two times four. And then I'll cut both boards to that height. I won't trim the width of the boards, I'll do that after they're attached. One thing to be careful of is to make sure that the two tabs at each end stay outside of the split board. They go to the inside of the board. I'm using a piece of 5mm cotton cord to set the uh, joints. So I'm going to uh, leave a gap of 5mm uh, between the spring and the boards. So once I've got them in position, got the squares, head and tail right, I'll, I'll put some locator marks in to help me after I've glued the split board and go to reattach it. To glue the split boards closed, I'm going to use quite a bit of pressure. Now I don't want to impress the pattern of the little tabs and the lever into the text block. So I'm going to insert tins between the text block and the boards um, before pressing. And this will also act as a moisture barrier. I'm going to use Mix as the adhesive. It is a bit fiddly getting the boards into position, so I want a bit of open time to allow me to muck around with it, make sure that the squares head and tail are right, and that the uh, width of the um, joint is correct.
Every so often I go through a period where I forget to hit the record button. I'm not sure what I did, but I didn't get any footage of me putting this into the press. There's nothing really special about it. I just put it on the edge of boards so I don't crush the, the spring. But I definitely leave it overnight. The next day I back corner the boards. I could have done that before attaching the boards. It's neither here nor there. I just cut them straight down. I don't uh, cut them as an, at an angle. But especially with cloth, the sharp corner can easily punch it through. Now I'll trim the fore edge of the boards. I'll do the same 4mm square. By this point the mechanics of the springs working, which is a bit of a pain in the neck because the book keeps wanting to close when you try and cut this fore edge. So just be careful to make sure you get it right and don't mess it up. Now it's time to cut the spring to length. So I'll just mark either side at the height of the boards and then put that across the back. I want to cut it in a crescent shape. So I want to add at least two millimeters to the height and then I'll cut that down to the board height. That extra material will be used to form the head cap. This doesn't need to be super neat because as you'll see soon, the top of the spring is going to be bruised heavily uh, to form the head cap. Cut a piece of cloth that has allowance for a 20 millimeter turn in at all around the book. So the head cap's going to have this inward slope. So to be able to mold that, we need to bruise the end of the spring. And then we're going to force paste down into the um, layers of the spring. So we essentially want it to delaminate and also to um, form this inward leaning um, shape. Use your fingernails and a bone folder to help the spring delaminate at the ends. You don't want it to delaminate beyond the edge of the text block. But once you have uh, some nice delamination, uh, get some paste and start to work that down into the top of the spring. Some people suggest using a sponge to wet the end of the spring before forcing the paste down into it. I'd rather just spend a bit of extra time and get more paste into the end of the spring.
I like to put a bit of PVA on the outside of the spring and inside the uh, groove, but only where the lever is. We don't want those tabs stuck down to the uh, covering material or to the boards at this point. So only put the PVA in the groove where the lever is. I'm going to use mix for the covering material. Just uh, one of those big jobs where you can get a bit nervous and so mix just gives you a, a few options if something doesn't go quite right. You don't want to stretch the cloth around the book. You just want it to make sure there's no excess. I had a little bit of uh, too much excess at the spine, so I just uh, pulled it back and, and fixed that up. That's the beauty of the mix. And now I'm going to form the grooves at the joint. So I'm going to get that loop of cotton sash cord and put that into the groove and then put it into the press. I've tied a slip knot in on this piece of cord. Again, put it on the edges of a board so you don't um, flatten the spring. And I'll leave it in the press about an hour. I want to make sure that that uh, groove is well and truly set. pretty happy with that result. When you're working with leather, the pattern in the cord is often pressed into the leather, which is quite nice. Trim the corners in preparation for doing the turn-ins. It's a fairly thick board, almost four millimeters, I think. So I've cut that about six millimeters away from the corner. Now I'm going to use PVA for this, but I'm not really sure why I did that. I, um, I have used um, mix in the past for this step, and I did have a bit of problem uh, with one of the turn ends uh, bunching up a little bit. And if I'd used mix, it would have been easier to uh, fix that up. So I would recommend using mix for the head and tail turn in rather than PVA. But this works as well. Just uh, if you um, have a bit of a, a wrinkle in the cloth, then it's just uh, a bit harder to work out. Now 
Use your fingers and your bone folder to get the cloth down into the inside of the spring and work out any wrinkles in the cloth. Leather's a bit easier to work with at this stage. Remember to set the corners. Repeat the same process at the other end of the book. Turn in the four edges. Now put a thinner piece of cord around the book to help form the head caps. Start by spreading out the head cap. Now cloth is harder to work than leather as I've already mentioned. So don't overstretch it because it's hard to work it back into shape if you overstretch it. Just get the hammer to start moulding it. Uh, over the top of the book and then just use your bone folder to start working that inward slope. One of the tricks the trade binders did was to use their shears because the uh, handle of their shears was about the right shape for the inside of the head cap. 
Although this spring's a little bit too small, really, uh, for the shears. It works better on larger springs. Now one of the hardest steps is to leave the book alone for at least a day. I like to leave it two days as the paste in the head cap uh, hardens up. Final step is pasting down the end papers. I'm just going to trim off a little bit, just over a millimeter, uh, so that I don't have to try and deal with the stretcher after it's been pasted down. I'll use PVA to glue down these little tabs and then I'll use mix to glue out the end paper. To make sure that those little tabs aren't noticeable under the uh, paste down, you want to give it a pretty good um, press. So again, you want to use the tins to stop any impression being pushed through into the text block. Leave it in the press for an hour or two and then prop it open to let it dry. So the really nice feature of this book is that it opens nice and flat for writing in. So let's compare it to some other binding structures to see how they um, stack up against the spring back as a stationary binding. So we'll look at a hollow back leather binding, a tight back leather binding and a hollow back um, case binding. So the hollow back case binding opens up nice and flat as well. Nowhere near as flat as the spring back, which opens up completely flat. The hollow back leather bound book that opens up pretty flat as well. But obviously, again, not as flat. And the book that opens up the least flat, of course, is the tight bound leather binding. I hope you've enjoyed this project. 
If you did, please hit the like button. I'd love to see photos of your completed projects. The next project will be a half bound uh, leather library binding, similar to the tight back leather binding I was just demonstrating. If you want to be informed when that's available, hit the subscribe button.